I don't think I speak with uh, flat vowels. I think uh, um, I'm the only one in this room that speaks normally. Uh, um, my name is John Koenig, and uh, I'm the law firm of Fredrickson and Byron, um, uh, whose main office is in Minneapolis. And I want to thank Robin and the death penalty, the ABA Death Penalty Representation Project, and Justice Stevens. Um, uh, for this award, um, I'll, in, I'll talk about my colleagues who are here with me today in just a little bit. Um, but mostly I want to thank um, my partners at Fredrickson and Byron. Um, some of them are here tonight. Uh, all of them who are here tonight work, have worked on the death penalty cases that my firm has handled. Um, all of us feel strongly uh, about doing pro bono work. All of us feel very strongly um, about uh, our death penalty representation. Um, uh, all of us don't really care whether our client is innocent or guilty, but we feel very strongly uh, about um, uh, the way the death penalty is, is uh, unfairly applied uh, in this country. But none of us could do what, we, what we've done in these cases if we didn't have the support of our partners um, in, our, in our law firm back in Minneapolis. Um, our firm has a culture of um, encouraging its lawyers to pursue their passions, um, whether it's in paying work, and we need paying work to keep the doors open, but non-paying work too. And, and more than allowing us to make our choices um, uh, about what we feel passionate about in the kinds of uh, pro bono cases that we handle, um, our law firm supports us, supports us um, by allowing us to spend our time on these cases and more importantly by allowing us to spend lots of money because these cases are very, to pursue adequately, are very expensive to pursue. And, and our partners back in Minneapolis don't complain. Um, uh, they understand, they support us, and they celebrate with us um, when, when we have uh, good results uh, and they cry with us when we don't have such good results. And so, um, we're very appreciative of this award, um, uh, but we're here only because, mostly because our partners support us and help us um, in, in doing this important work. We took the first case uh, representing Dobie Gillis Williams uh, in 1987. I was uh, uh, a young real estate lawyer, and Tom Frazier, who's sitting right back there, was a young civil litigator, and Clint Cutler was a young bankruptcy lawyer. And if Dobie had some real estate to sell, I could have done it. Or if, <laughs> if, uh, if he had some civil plaintiffs who were pursuing him, Tom could have handled that. Or if he needed Chapter 11, Clint could have done it. Um, but that isn't what he needed. Um, what he needed was expertise in uh, post-conviction remedies and in death penalty defense. Um, and he needed it in a state, um, I don't want to say any part of the United States is a foreign country, but uh, in, in Louisiana, um, their law is based on, on the Spanish system, the French system, a little Roman law thrown in there. And um, uh, we, we were not equipped to handle that, um, but uh, we had outstanding support. When you take an ABA death penalty case, um, you think, well, you know, I'm a real estate lawyer and I don't know anything about this, and I know Clinton Tom felt the same way. But we got incredible support. Um, Danny, Danny LaBeouf, who was just up here, um, uh, she helped us. Nick Tranacosta, who's, who's with, um, I don't know what he's with now, but he was with the, the capital, the Louisiana, uh, Loyola uh, Capital Defense Project back then. And he, we found out last week, he, he tries death penalty cases now. Um, and we found out last week that uh, he tried a death penalty case um, to, um, uh, a jury, and he's very disappointed because he didn't get an acquittal, um, but he got a no death sentence. Uh, so, um, you know, he was he was successful, and we were you know he he thought he might be able to be here tonight, but he wasn't able to be here. Um, with with that kind of incredible help, um, we we got brought up to speed, and and we were able to um, uh, provide the kind of representation that somebody who's sitting on death row deserves. Uh, we also got incredible help uh, on a spiritual and an emotional uh, basis from Sister Helen Prejean. She worked with us. Um, um, uh, she was up in Minneapolis. Uh, we were with her down in Louisiana. She spent uh, hours and hours and hours and hours with us and uh, with our client, Dobie Gillis-Williams, uh, and with his family. 
she also interacted with the victim's family, um, and um, she was an incredible help. It was, it was an experience that none of us will ever forget. Ultimately, um, we did not have a happy ending in that case. Um, uh, uh, Dobie was executed uh, 12 years after uh, we started representing him. Um, uh, but now I go back to my partners, uh, our partners back in Minneapolis, uh, how they supported us. Um, when, when Denny came up to Minneapolis and asked us to take another case, um, it would have been easy for, for our firm to say, you know, we've taken on one case um, and it's far away in Louisiana. Um, and, and remember, we're only, back then we were a firm of 100 lawyers, now we have 243 lawyers. Um, uh, it was a big deal for us to handle that case. Um, but Steve Kaplan felt passionately about it, and he wanted to build a, a team of lawyers. And I think at, at various times we've had, is it 21? More than that, probably. Yeah, uh, uh, 24 uh, lawyers working on that case, um, various as aspects of that case in our office. And as I said before, we're able to do that because our partners allow us to follow our passions and will support us in every way to let us take a case like that. And Steve Kaplan's been working on that case for uh, 12 years uh, along with his team. Denny's been working on it too uh, with us. She's co-counsel. And um, uh, Damon, our client in that case, is innocent. Um, we've proven that he's innocent. And we hope that we get to the result um, that, that some of you have been fortunate enough to get in your cases. Um, so now fast forward to uh, two and a half years ago. Um, I, I'm, I'm the managing partner of our firm, and I know, you know, well, it was in 2008, in September, um, uh, that's when uh, the crash hit in a big way. And, and every large law firm was affected by it. We were affected by it. Um, but we heard about another case at almost exactly that time, uh, the Michael Weary case. And Ed Cassidy, who's back there, um, along with Steve Kaplan and Clint Cutler and Tom Frazier, um, uh, stepped up and took that case. Uh, and he felt passionate about it. He built a team, uh, a, a, a young partner in our firm, Jim Mayer and Ed, have spent weeks driving around Louisiana um, uh, developing uh, an innocence case. And the, the case is just beginning. Um, but it's a very strong case, and, and uh, we are just pleased with the opportunity to, uh, to be involved with it, to be able to follow our passions. Once again, the, the, the beginning of the downturn, a real uncertain time for law firms, but our partners stepped up and allowed us to follow our passions, um, uh, to be involved in this case, uh, to do um, uh, what we felt strongly about, and they're supporting us in every way. Um, and the person who does most of the rallying is Pam Wanzell, who's sitting right back there. She's our pro bono coordinator, and you won't find um, a, a person who is more committed um, uh, to helping us uh, achieve innocent verdicts for the two clients that, that uh, we are representing. Um, there's a legal side of these cases, and, and then there's an emotional, personal side. Um, and um, we understand that. Uh, Tom and Clint and I understand it from uh, Dobie's case. And, and as um, when the Fifth Circuit uh, reversed uh, the federal district court um, uh, ruling in our favor, um, uh, and uh, we went up to the Supreme Court, and it was close to the end of the term, and the, um, the Supreme Court, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get these terms wrong, because remember, I'm a real estate lawyer, but uh, the Supreme Court, um, uh, granted uh, certiorari or at least um, uh, put it over to the next term so that they can consider, could consider it again. And we were really upbeat and we thought um, that we were going to get a shot at, at appealing the Fifth Circuit to the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, but then on the first day of the next term, uh, they denied our petition. Uh, and, and, and then we had, and we still had uh, the procedural um, process that we could go through, but it was getting bleaker and bleaker. Um, and um, we had an opportunity uh, just prior to that to do some DNA testing, but um, depending upon how you read the results, they were either inconclusive or not positive. Um, we knew it was the end of the line uh, for our client. And um, with the help of Sister Helen Prejean, we were able to um, 
have the difficult conversations with our clients. And as our colleague from Arnold, Arnold and Porter talked about, um, that's, that's a very difficult time. Um, but I can say this, and I know Tom can say it, and Clint can say it. Um, we've all been lawyers for about 30 years, a little more than 30 years, uh, and we have not handled um, uh, uh, anything more meaningful uh, or anything more important than the case we worked on. I know Steve Kaplan feels the same way, and I know Ed Cassidy feels the same way. So um, on behalf of my colleagues who are here tonight and on behalf of um, my law firm, because um, they're proud of us and, and they're proud of what we do and we're proud of them for letting us do it, we thank you very much.